I had the wonderful opportunity to sit down and have an amazing conversation with Bo Chun Liu, also known as Sophia. She is a world-class professional baseball umpire from Taipei, Taiwan. She's a true leader for creating new opportunities for women's participation in professional sports, both inside Taiwan and throughout the world. Truly, her story is very unique, has to be one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done. And what had originally been planned to be a 10 to 15 minute piece actually wound up being an hour. We touched upon some pretty heady topics from the supernatural to religion, to spirituality, to social justice, sports, her history and her views on Taiwan and Taiwan's future. So with that, I give you this interview. Enjoy. Thank you. Well, Sophia, I'd like to thank you for uh, agreeing to do this interview. This means a lot to uh, me to have this opportunity. You know, I really appreciated you coming to the Taiwan Vigil, our big 136th Taiwan Vigil. We've been doing it for 12 years, and to have someone like yourself from Taiwan who's mm -hmm. doing all this amazing work with such an amazing life story come to join us, uh, it, it just means a lot. So we we'll really appreciate that. I know I speak on behalf of uh, everybody at the community, FAPA, Massachusetts chapter, and everyone there. So thank you very much. Well, it's my great honor, you know, for this interview and also join your activity in Harvard because I really admire that what you have done for Taiwan and also those students, I mean, and those young people. I mean, you know, it's amazing, 12 years, I mean, if it, you know, people get the motivation to do something, but, but uh, usually people give out if there's no reward or no response. So you, you people, you know, looking for higher and bigger uh, value, and maybe nobody uh, responds to you, but you still, you know, go, go through, overcome a lot of uh, difficulty, especially I know the weather in Boston, you know, sometimes in winter was terrible. So I admire that your consistency, that's amazing. I mean, that was amazing. So when people ask me that, uh, because I'm also a baseball umpire, so people ask me that, uh, how you overcome uh, the difficulty, you know, those challenges. And I, I always say that, oh, I'm very lucky. I mean, when I do only a little bit, and people seeing seeing me encourage me, and even they award me. I mean, with some you know award, global or national. So I think I just have done a little bit. So people get another accomplishment or something. But I I admire more is people you know daily, monthly, long term do something. But even nobody seeing it. I think that spirit is really touch me and I sometimes I was thinking even if I can do something you know I really love it I really believe in it and I do it even nobody seeing me I think that is the truly spiritual that I'm pursuing <laughs> that, that's awesome yeah and I think that is even more even more pure mm. yeah you know because when you people uh, admire you when people uh, accomplish, uh, give you a lot of encouragement or even the accomplishment. You know, people sometimes people get lost, and I am afraid that I I got lost one day. I mean, because I've been an umpire. For example, the reason I be here stays. I'm here for uh, because I promote the gender equality in sports. So I got some award and some reputation global. So, but uh, I always tell myself that be careful. 
because when you speak, when you have power, it's it's sometimes it's good thing, but sometimes bad. You know, uh, if you don't be careful, probably you boring someone, but you don't know, right? So the power is, it it can be good, but it can be terrible. So I prefer that. I prefer that if I I can do do good part, maybe just don't give me the power. Yeah, so you know we all have to be careful. Sometimes something good you think it's good that reputation and people looking at you, but sometimes it's it's challenge, even sometimes test. Yeah, mm, so that's very wise. So I would so that's how I say I. When I I only stay in Boston for two weeks and I only free for one week, but I tell them I must go over there in Harvard Corner because that is what I want to do. I mean, consistently do something, even though people don't agree. Sometimes people don't uh, support, but you still do it. You believe in it. That value is. I think that's truly value pure. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's something we've all got to live up to. Yeah, is if you can do something and be totally independent yeah. from what other people think or what the world gives you praise or they beat you up toward, but at the end of the day, you've got to be yourself. Yes. And even if you're the only one there, yeah. you know, yeah, you're, you're, still cold, you're there. still going to be there. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's nice to hear those words from you, and it's it's encouraging. So and because we've had our moments where there's just been you know there's a couple of us who we've done solo missions and you know we're freezing and it's cold yeah. but Taiwan freedom is it's worth it it's human rights is yeah. worth it so yeah. um, thank you for uh, your support yeah. and joining us and giving us the opportunity to learn more about you and your story mm -hmm. and um, you know what you're doing and what you hope to build in the future so uh, I'd really like to ask you about your story with inside Taiwan at you know at the temple as a spirit medium. Okay. I've not yeah. um, I've not encountered that in Taiwan. I've seen it in other contexts. I've seen it within the Afro Caribbean community in Lynn. I've encountered that, and it was interesting, and I've uh, lightly encountered that within the Tibetan community. Mm -hmm. But inside Taiwan, and I thought I traveled really far and wide inside Taiwan. I knew it existed, yeah. but I never yeah, maybe touched next it. Time, next time you should try. Yeah, yeah. well, I, want, I mean, that's a documentary yeah. uh, I actually want to do, but we can talk about that yeah. uh, in a different film. But, you know, it would be very interesting to hear your story. You know what happened, what led up to it, and just you know your experience. Okay, uh, when I was little, very very little, maybe just one two years old, when I start to speak, and my parents think I'm kind of weird because I see people that they don't see. So at the beginning, it was a problem because my parents, you know, they looking for a lot of temple as a lot of masters, try to help me out. They would think like. In our tradition, they think I have another eye and try to close it. Yeah, so yeah, they quite busy, you know. But I think when I was go age six, seven, they just give up. I mean, I mean, because what once my father told me that she he after work he saw me I do the ceremony to my door with a pencil. So my mom, my parents think. Oh, don't take her to those temple anymore because he, I was imitate those rituals, you know. So, so what? And I asked my father. So what you you have you done? They sent me to do sports because when I you know go play, when I go back, I'm I was exhausted. So I, I will not tell them. Hey, I see a ghost here. I see somebody here. Yes, I like that. So that's very interesting. Um, but some. Relatives and the neighborhoods know my situation, so they will ask me uh, for help from time to time. Maybe you know, lend their babies. You know, somebody have bad dreams, somebody got possessed, or something like that. Or they think their 
house is not clean, somebody want to buy a new house, they better bring me together to see if anything else over there. Yeah, that. but I have a little bit me uh, memory, but not, you know, just childhood. I'm, I remember some case, so I just do it, you know, not all the time, so it's okay, you know, in my, uh, when I, before I go to teenage. So uh, when I turn to 15, 16, my relative uh, who own a temple and, and my parents, they are tried, they, they trust in him. So he say he going to help me to cross this ability. I mean, if I, you know, follow him. And then he discovered that I can communicate with ghosts. Yeah, so I become, I feel I'm an employee of his temple. I mean, I have to go almost every day and answer people's questions. Yeah, I become like, I, I, I don't want to say I'm a medium. I, I would prefer to say I was an interpreter. Okay. You know, I interpret because I really don't like them possess on me. You know, some medium, they lend a lot of genes or ghosts, whatever you say, come to their body body and lost their mind sense. I don't like that. But you were fully conscious yes, at I, every time you... Yeah, I would ask them to stay back. Just try to talk to me. If I cannot receive the message, I just give up. Because I really don't like it. Because I don't feel good. I feel cold. I feel chilly. And I will shake my body. I really don't like the feeling. And I got exhausted after that. So, well, I'm willing to helping people. But not much. You know, I think I would, I can interpret interpret it for you, but you if you want me to, you know, shaking and uh, hurt my body, well, I would say, I I don't think so. That is not what I want. But they told me that it's my destiny to do this because I was natural born like this way. I should follow a natural, you know, the natural way. But. After I go to college, college, you know, I I've been work for his temple about seven years, you know. That's a long time. Yeah, so I don't have my own school life, you know. People, you know, they have dreams. I I very jealous my f friends, you know, they can have fun, go to movies, but I spend a lot a lot a lot of time in temple. I don't have much free time. I mean. Yeah, so after I go to college and I uh, have make some friends and they told me that hey because I major in social work you know and we talk about how to saving people's problem so I realized that I cannot just solve self saving their problems they want to get a fortune they want you know some people got disease somebody have a domestic violence they have their own issue but Ghost or what, whatever you say, the genes, they are not the only problem. You know, if you move it and your life will be all the way, go to the way you want, not not really. They are just a part of your life. Even they, you send them away, if you have own, your own problem, it still exists. So I think people don't want to face their own problem. They don't want to face, they want to brand some, someone. So invisible ghost or gene is the, the way it exists, you know. So they would blame the ghosts rather than, or rather than their own bad behavior or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Even people ask me that she don't want to go to a dentist. You know, we don't all don't want to go to a dentist. They ask me if there's a ghost in in her tooth. I think that was so stupid. You know? And people ask me if I can ask them for herb, for their disease, for their illness. And uh, I told them that, yeah, I interpret her, you know, give them some medicine, you know, traditional medicine. And they took the uh, recipe and told, asked me that, it's too difficult, I don't read it. I say, don't worry, you just go to the traditional pharmacy, you know, they pick out the traditional herb or something mixed together. 
and he told me that I don't have time for this. You know, I have to work work very late. I said, no worry. You just give them some more money. They can cook it. They can pack it. You know, the the brown one is very convenient. And he said, you know, I have to take this to take this three times a day for seven days. I said, yeah, that's what what they say. They say, oh, it's very inconvenient. And I told, so I so asked them, then what do you want? That he asked me that, do you have anything that's convenient? You know, I'm very busy. And I told him, yeah, McDonald. And he asked me, McDonald, McDonald can fix my stomach problem. I say no, but it fix your inconvenience. Ooh. Oh, he kind of pissed off, but I was pissed off as well. You, you, he, he just wants something, you know, fun. Was the ghost pissed off? Yeah. Or no? <laughs> That's his his stomach. Yeah, problem. yeah. Uh, it's not about a ghost, you know. So, you know, when I turned to you know age seventeen, eighteen, I think, oh God, I need to have my own life. You know, this is getting too much. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's really waste my time. You know, I, every day, you know, after school, after my daily life, I have to go to a temple, maybe a nine o'clock, go to da zhuo. Sometimes I was busy, but I have to get there at eleven o'clock. How come? Because we start to worship and ask, uh, open to people to ask questions. Start at eleven o'clock. It's pretty late. I mean, for sure. high school students, but they just pick the time eleven o'clock. So I so I cannot go home. You know, till twelve, one, two. You know, even later. And this temple was a, is what it was a Taoist temple or a Buddhist they mix temple? Together. Or a mix? Yeah, mix together. Mix. So as mixed long, between Taoism and Buddhism. Yeah, yeah. As long as you can answer their question, you can fix their problem. It's worth. But so they don't really care about you know to become the like vegetarian the or any of that. No, no, they don't really care about. It. They just you know they donate. You fix it. That's it. You know, it's sometimes I ask, ask them. I think we are just making money, but they say you know it's kind of business. You know. Yeah. So I really don't like it. Maybe so you got cynical. You felt these people are coming with stupid questions, and they're not learning or growing. And yeah, they they don't even care about if they can be a better person. You know, when you they we talk with the uh, karma, we talk about you know the charity. No, they don't care. They just want to you know. You they want to, their problem disappear. Did you? I mean. Forgive me for asking this. Yeah. I'm just too damn curious. So it just popped into my mind. So you had all these cynical experiences of people asking for, you know, lottery ticket numbers or stocks. you know, stocks. So there you go, a more lottery or a, a, a ghost in their tooth. Did you ever have a case that was a positive case where somebody, you, you know? They they got deep meaning or something. Was there ever the other side of the coin, well, or is that like so rare? It's a <laughs> joke. Well, I really love a story is about a young a kid, not real kids. He's about thirteen, fourteen years old, and uh, every time dear the sunshine, his his grandparents took him, took him to my temple, and every time during the sunshine, uh. A sunset. Uh, he he will hit himself on to a wall. Yeah, about maybe five six o'clock, he hit the wall. So he he looked like possessed, got crazy and hit the wall. And they took him to the hospital. You know, got some tests, but he's fine. He's healthy. So he took to my temple. His par his. Grandparents think maybe some ghost, you know, uh, control him, you know, so ask how to fix it, you know, how to help him out. And I take a look, he's fine, he's okay. But he's, as, as long as time is up, he will, you know, possess, look like possessed and hit the wall. So <clears throat> I told them that I need to talk to him privately. 
So we go to go back there is a Chan Fang and I ask him Well I don't see ghost in you, your body, even next to you. You are fine, you are normal. Why you do this? Don't you think your grandparents got crazy? They are so worried, they spend so much money. Why you do this? Why you hurt yourself? And he told me that just one sentence, he just tell, tell me a word. This is the only way my parents come go home. Because his parents got divorced and they have their own family, their own children. Nobody w would like to come back to see him. But only when he got sick, got possessed, his parents got worried about him and they will come back to see him. That's the way he he, he do. He's just six, 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 13, 14. Wow. So, I I told him that well later let's go out and I will tell them that there is a women ghost in you and I will give it him give your parents some food so and I tell and I will give you six twelve of them and you I will tell your parents that if every weekend they come back and uh, serve you the food, so the water to drink. You will be help. You will be fine. Is that the deal? Is okay? And he says okay. So that was a secret between us. That is so cool. Yeah, I, I feel sad, but you know, kids just kids. Yeah, but I I cannot tell the truth to the parents because they have their own life, but. Maybe that's the way. I, 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 I think I help the kids and help the family. I hope so. But that human being, you know, life is difficult and uh, complicated. So, in this case, I was wondering that maybe we can just only try our best. We we imagine the happiness that we want, but you know. Maybe it's not true. This that maybe the happiness is only we imagine. You know, we have to. We all, everyone, have to face our own bitterness. You know. Yeah. I'm so sorry. He was just thirteen and have to face it. But I also told him, well, that's his life. You have to try to figure out. You know, you you think you are in a very awful situation, but we all. Do. So, we're going to lose our parents, lose our love one day, you know, sooner or later, your grandparents as well. So, you have to face it. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Well, I hope I did help these kids. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that story. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what to, <laughs> what to ask okay. you following up on okay, that. Okay, so I'm... Please go ahead. Okay, I'm willing to help people. I mean, I don't mind helping people. But life is so complicated. Mm. You know, people are so complicated. There are a lot of situations that I cannot handle. For example, I'll give you another story. I went to another funeral and the, the man passed away. He was really rich, rich man. And they asked me to ask him if anything left and anything they want to say if he was satisfied with his own funeral. Yeah, something like that. And I went there and asked, asked him and he said, he told me that everything's fine. This but, is the man who passed away. Yeah, you yeah, were yeah, able yeah, to yeah, communicate yeah, with yeah, his spirit. Yeah, yeah, that's and he was at the funeral. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was observing everybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want to make that yeah, clear. Thank okay. You. And but he say he, the only thing he concerned is he was so worried about his little girl, his daughter, still young. So he was worried about her. Yeah. Please take good care of her. And I tell the family. And the family was pissed off. They were so angry. And they say, you know, they are not, 
I know they are angry and I feel the worries that you are a liar. You know, no, you're wrong. He he don't have a daughter, something like that. And I was, I don't feel good. I was upset as well. I, actually, I, I was dismay, dismayed because I'm just trying here to help. Did, Maybe. You have, did you have any doubt that you were talking to him or you were 100% sure you were talking to him? I'm not so sure. So oh, I, I, I told him, I told him, just want help. Maybe that person is not your father, but you really don't have to do this, you know, in public. So, you know, to say, to tell people that I'm, you know, something like a liar, you know, just. But, you know, people ask me to rest to another room. Yeah, and I say, since they think I communicate with the wrong person, I, I just leave. I mean, I just want, I'm not here, for, I'm here for nothing. I just want to try to help. If I make them angry, better I leave. Maybe mm. you just think I make a mistake and, you know, wrong person, I, I can just leave. Um, but they try to say something, look embarrassing, and they communicate. Okay, each other, talk with each other there. And finally, somebody come to tell me, well, he did, he did have a daughter, but no way. not in public. But it was secret. Yes, and they are in the lawsuit now. They don't want to give the properties, share the property to the daughter. But I speak out in public, so that really embarrasses it. Oh, and there's no way you could have known that. Yeah. Wow. But I still feel feel angry because because they're calling you out rather than them face the situation. Yeah. They're calling you out. And you say, you and you're just it. trying to help, but they're giving you a hard time for telling the truth. Yeah, and uh, you told you you asked me to be here. Because you care about your father, right? But really, they're caring about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But the outcome is not so bad because probably after the, emo the, the having emotion, they come down. I they told me that they they did share some property, a house, some money for a girl to a girl. Yeah. So it's not really bad, but. I just want to share with you that not everything, you know, it's not just like, I, I remember there's a very famous film, very famous movie, The Sex Sense. Six Sense, Sex, okay, yeah. yeah. I, told, I told my friend that, yeah, you look, if it's very touch, you know, if you think that is very good, nice, but if people know this boy can communicate, people will be complicated. Or they'll be crawling all over him. They'll be chasing him down. Yeah, and the even more quest problem is he or me, we cannot be a just honest man. You know, people have their desire. They know they want you, they expect you to say something, but not the totally truth. Right? I what get it. I get it. Yeah. So I really don't like it. I really don't like it. I I'm I I'm willing to helping people, but that too complicated. Yeah. So you have the complication <laughs> of the human frailty, or maybe not the most positive motivations on one side. Okay, but then on the other side, you don't know who do you you don't have perfect clarity that who you're talking to on the other side is who they are. Yeah. So right you know, is that is that a correct statement? Yeah, because I can I can. I cannot ask them to provide their ID, right? <laughs> so yeah. I just, so that's what I say. I'm just an interpreter. Yeah. This, this is what I found. Yeah. And, you know, some people ask me that you should do more work, you know, make you even the better, you know, to, you know, more powerful, you know, in, in that world. But for me, no, I don't want to be. I, I, I'm not interested in right, this right, stuff, right. so I don't want to be an even better media. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't like them. Fascinating. You know? No, Fascinating. I'm not interested. So, um, uh, after I graduated from university, I want to be a social worker. Yeah, okay. I want to, you know, do 
helping people. Because you saw the suffering so, that's out yeah. there. You you were able because of the people asking yeah. you questions and what you've encountered on both sides of uh, the living and the other side. You were like, yeah, I prefer to be a social worker. Yeah, sure. In in, in the real world, yeah. So this really piece off my relative, my, the temple. So they think I I was get possessed. They think the devil, you know, comes into my body. That's why I don't listen to them anymore. So of course I don't because I'm an adult then. Yeah, and you know I already graduated from university, age twenty I think. I'm an adult. I want to be responsible to my life. Mm. Before that, I would say people force me to do this because wow. yeah, I don't want to do it, but but I have to obey them, so I do this. But after I graduated from university, I told myself, "You are an adult. Don't blame anyone." You know, and I see a lot of dead people. You know, I went to a lot of funeral, and uh, I be company with those people. You know, they are dying. So they want someone to be company with them. So I go to hospital, spend time with them, and most of them they have a lot of regret. They always told me that, oh, what I should do? Oh, I don't, I shouldn't do this. I should do that. And I was pretty young at that. That, but I tell myself when I, you know, face the day I going to leave the world. I don't want to be like that. I hope one the day coming, I will tell myself, "Hey, I I try my best." You and did your best. You were real. Yeah. You did what needed to be done. And I'm ready to, to my next generation. Yeah, that's what I want to. That's amazing. That's what I want. Yeah, I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's so. You made the trajectory from doing the work you did at the temple, mm -hmm. and then and so. To me, believe it or not, mm -hmm. that feels like a like a very logical step. You did the temple mm -hmm. work. You had, for lack of a better way of saying it, you had a skill. You had an ability, you know, that was pretty valuable, actually. And I, you know, I could see how that could be exploited, and you know, all the the things that you indicated. And then you went. It seems like a natural progression. Yeah. Let's do some social work yeah. and try to help people, and you know, in this world. So, um, tell us a little bit more about that. Was that yeah. is that the work you're talking about, like yeah. at the hospital? Yeah. You know, the hospice, yeah. helping people as yeah. they're dying. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. So when I become a social work, I helping the kids who drop off on school. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, yeah. so because, that kind of social work with yeah, like, the young. Yeah, because they always hang around in temple. So, you know, I know their language. I know how to get along with them. Okay. And I tell them, hey, I'm your big sister. I know what you're doing there. But I, I suggest you go back to school. So I, I will share with them my own life that only education helped me to have another choice, to choice my, my life. So I will, will ask them to reconsider, go back to school, out of temple, right now, <laughs> something like that. So, yeah, um, I think that's the work I should do. So I, I've been a social work for a couple of years for um, young bank kids and uh, kids with sexual assaurants and, uh, you know, prostitutes. And this is in Taipei? Yeah, in Taipei, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Well, I enjoy what I done in real real world. So, about my past, I publish about four books. Okay. About, yeah, about my story. So, anything you got curious, I wrote those stories. You know, all kind of different kind of stories, in the four books. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's quite a thing to uh, interview someone with that kind of background and. Um, I, I'm very touched by that. So you moved on from that to social work. To me, that just feels very logical. It, it just it, that makes all the sense in the world to me. And um, I appreciate your journey. You saw the cynical side of humanity, and you know wanted to make the better of it and, and bring some value and you know help people. That's pretty you know, impressive. We you know we only have the life. Once this time, 
Mm. And you know, I I feel some people when they going to die, they don't know why they live. They spend so much time in this world. They use so many resources, and the tragedy is they don't know why I'm here for, and they are dying. I think that was so stupid. That is, and stupid. that's so waste. Yeah, it's that is waste. That because is I also see many ghosts or jinn, whatever you say. They really want to do something, but they don't have body. Now it's too late. Yeah, but you have body. You have a choice. How come don't don't you figure out what you want in your life? Look at them. They they are so jealous to us. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to have a. They yeah, they want to do body. something. Yeah, yeah. But they cannot. But we already own what they don't have. But still, we just eat, drink, fool around all day. And when we, when we going lost our body, why I'm here? Where I'm going to? So I look at them, ask me to help them. I said, I really don't know how to help them. Only you can help yourself. Hopefully he, they have another <laughs> good January in next life. I really don't know. So I really want to aware people that, hey, your time is not, our time is limit. We never know when we're going to pass away. You know, I see some people, they just take a nap and they're gone. No, they just gone. Yeah, there are no guarantees. Yeah, there are no, no guarantees, absolutely. Yeah, so why don't we face it, Amy? Amy? I mean, when we were kids, they told me, you know, we need a good grade to go to good school. When we graduated from uh, school, they say, hey, you need to work hard to get a good job, good salary. And they will ask you to get married, and we're going to have children, and that we ab abuse our children again. They have the good grade. And uh, yeah, you know, it is an abuse. They always ask us to be prepared, prepare your next step of your life. You know, we have to prepare for our job. We prepare. We all die, but nobody tell us, "Hey, you should prepare for your death." Yeah, yeah. I read somewhere that we have to live. We should live our lives as if this is the last day of our life, and make it count. Yeah, and live. With an awareness of now, not too distracted by the past that you can't change, it's yeah. over, or not too over consumed by a future which you don't even know anyway. Yeah. It's going to be whatever it's going to yeah. be. I mean, you can influence it, of course. Yeah. You don't want to be irresponsible, but mm -hmm. if you're too over worried about it, mm -hmm. you never get to live in the present. Yeah, and you cannot enjoy. Yes. Yeah, I need to learn from that more. <laughs> I try. So, yeah, I mean, I still you know, I try. Yeah, I think my dog teach taught me. We just had a dog come into our lives two years ago, and he's fully present. Yeah. I'm like, Damn it! This dog's got the answer. Here I am reading my books, teachers, everything. Wow! And then the dog's like way ahead. I'm like, how do you do that? They really he's enjoyed happy. it. He's I happy. He's there. He's present. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But um, thank you for all of that. So let's talk about, if we can, about um, your journey into baseball and okay. being a, a well, world famous umpire and all of that. And speaking to somebody yeah. who knows almost nothing about baseball, yeah. so forgive me for that. No worries. But, well, I love baseball. You know, baseball is the most popular sport in Taiwan. Yeah, so I'm also enthusiastic in baseball as well. So. I'm a big fan, yeah. So then I become volunteer since I was in high school and in the university I be a volunteer for baseball team. Pretty little kids, you know. And they are under privilege uh, what did I say? Um, they are not in good economic uh, family. Yeah. And I you know, be company with them, help them out to buy them the growth equipment, gear. Oh, underprivileged. Underprivileged, okay. Yes. Um, and then we go to tournaments. You know, we spend the summer with them, go to tournaments, and the umpire sucks. I was yelling at umpires. They can do better, you know. I think our kids need deserve a fair game. Yeah. So I told them I can do better. 
than you. <laughs> so I become umpire. I think the kids deserve a fair game. Yeah. So being umpire is a way I think I can contribute to baseball because I I earn so many happiness, hope in baseball. And so I want to do something for what I love, baseball. So I become umpire, you know. I hope that's if I be a good umpire, people enjoy it again. That's the way I contribute myself. You mm-hmm. know? That's the way I help kids, you know. So I become the umpire. But at that time I was umpire in two thousand six and there were probably no formal, you know, uh female umpire at that time. So In all of Taiwan. Probably, yeah. In softball, yes, there, 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 there are many. But maybe in baseball, uh, regular uh, tournaments, maybe not. So okay. I, so it was pretty tough. I mean, at the beginning, because people don't think people think you are not belong here. I heard that girls not allowed like that. Yeah, so quite difficult. Yeah, but I was very, very, very lucky. I mean. Uh, I got sponsored by Yankees and the All Star, the Factory All Star. That's impressive. Yeah, they sponsored me gear, and uh, I don't have pre, I don't have too much, too many chance to umpire in Taiwan at that time. So I umpire in Hong Kong and then Australia, and uh, I asked All Star to sponsor me to come to umpire school in States, Florida. So I came here three times. I got uh, both license. There are two of them. And oh, you need license. a license for being umpire. Yeah, yeah, Shows you course. little I know, yeah, but you yeah. got that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So well, I got a lot. I got in power in states, you know, because they recognize me, and even in states, they 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 knew you are an umpire. They respect you. They respect people, you know, do something pioneer and do something, you know. Is a rare gender, so I really enjoy it. I mean, wow, just, wow! They they look at my ability and they they willing to listen to my difficulty on baseball field because the uh, because the uh, facilities in baseball park is not easy for women, especially those equipment. So I would say if it's job for for men, it's not easy one. It's not. It's also not easy for women. So why don't we stop bullying each other? You know, just try to be a better one. Yeah. And then all the way, I become WBSC. I mean, uh, international level umpire. Yeah. And then I. I realized my story. I can inspire other girls who interested in baseball, but they don't have too many company company. So I remember once in Taiwan, I umpired the national game, and the to- after the tournament, the coaches, the kids, they you know they bow to me and say thank you, umpire. And at that time. I realized that people always tell me that to interpret her for ghost is my destiny. It's my timing in my destiny. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering that I just drink tea over there and people give me money. That's too easy. But when I go to bar ballpark, I work hard and I lend these kids and even adults, coaches. They respect me as a female on the field, and they got they will they will respect other female on field. So, no more people will say skirt not allowed anymore. That is my destiny. I mean, I really helping some people. I really make some change. Yeah. So I knew I should stand over there. As long as I stand over there, I inspire other girls. That's impressive. Yeah, so that's what I done, so all the way here now. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. And I believe that I still believe that because education changed my life. 
I have a lot of friends, you know, when I grew up in temple, but some of them they drop off from school, so they 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 have to struggle with their life. I mean, make money, you know. But I I I studying all the way. Now I'm taking a PhD program. I mean, education expand my world, and uh, uh, I get more good ability. And uh, I got more resource. I know more people with our resource provide me the job. I mean, I, I believe that education changed my life. Yeah. So now I founded the association, the uh, Taiwan Women's Sports Association, and um, we helping other girls. But also we development some uh, teaching materials. Because I still believe education may change their life. You give them because I I was a social worker and I run the food bank. You know, when we help these women and girls who suffering the domestic violence or sexual assaults, we provide them job. We provide them milk powder, diapers, but some of them, unfortunately. They rely on social welfare. Oh, because they haven't learned how to become stronger themselves. Actually, I think they are all strong, but they, but don't, they know don't believe. It. They don't know it, and they don't believe. They think the happiness they need a husband. That you know, in our social stereotype, that is me. If you you divorce, if you got a social assurance. They would think you are dirty. You are not worthy. Nobody loves you, so they don't deserve a good life. But that's it was not. That's totally not true. Sure, yeah, they're good. I mean, some bad thing happens, but they work hard. But sometimes they don't have a uh, support from society or their friends, even their families cannot support them. Or they, they put them down. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I have. To, yeah, that's worse, but it happens. So, I was. So then I think that only people, when you believe you can stand up, when you believe you can independent, you can fo- face all the challenge. Otherwise, no matter how many resources you put on them, they they cannot stand up. So it's belief in themselves, or is yes. it fear? Yeah. Or do you think it's both? Both. Both, because in their experience, they have to. They, I, I believe they try very hard, but it's the coincidence is failure. Also, they ha- their past is haunting them. They yeah, had their, yeah. They, they had try, these they try, falling down, falling down, time, and then yeah. they look back on that and say, yeah. "See how many times I fell down." And people this betray me. My husband betray me. And then it becomes this self. Feeding loop. Yeah, yeah. So they hurt themselves. So they try very hard, but you know the feedback was terrible. You so know? How, how do we break that cycle? Yeah, yeah. So then I think the sports can help them. Sport experience can help them because sports help people more healthy, confidence. You know, psychologically, to, mentally, everything. Yeah. So you don't have to talk them. With birth, with language, as long as they they experience, they stay with their body, take care of themselves, find that motivation to get better, At, and uh, also sports re- release the pressures as well, yeah. So I think sports can help people. Yeah. So that's why I think since I got benefit from baseball, and karate. So I think sports benefit me a lot. I want other girls may have the same experience. Yeah. And oh, so you can... also mentioned karate. Oh yeah. You have you do that as well. Yeah, I practice that as well. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, because I released uh, my pressure when I was in temple. Yeah, martial art is great. You know, you kick someone and they will say thank you. 
That's pretty nice. Well, it's 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 also self discipline, and 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 if you have sure. self discipline, that's sure. like I don't want to say control. That sounds like yeah, I mean, you there have is control, but you're able to you're able to defeat something within your own mind to yeah. push through barriers. I would think. I mean, you know better than me, but if you're able to do that more or at a small level, you know, success builds on success. Yeah, and, and you also. You also have to face your fear. You also have to challenge yourself that you are all on your own. You know, most people don't want to face their fears. Yeah, but for example, when you practice karate, you have to fight with somebody. You have to face it. You have to face it. People challenge you. You have to face it. You have defense. You have attack. On the baseball field, also, if you are at a batting position, you are all on your own. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's is that that is all. I mean, no matter is, uh, successful or failure, it's all, empower process. Yeah, that's why, I think, sports is not only about the gold medal, or you become an athlete. No, it can help you, a lot. Yeah, inside, outside, everywhere. That's awesome. Yeah. So I hope I can really, I really, I can share my experience, my life experience, because I I'm willing to share my life experience because you know, in our traditional you know, uh, religion we think that I was born nature to see ghosts, and so many things I have been experienced. Some people say. I had a good karma last life. That's why I got the ability. Some people say I must be done very bad karma, so I have to face so many challenge in my this life. Hmm. You know what? I don't think so. Because because I don't know my previous life, and when I was a kid, I did nothing wrong. Why I have to suffer in this? So I told myself. I cannot go to my childhood and you know make my future make any change. But I tell myself, I believe all this happening is mean something. If I can use my experience to helping people, and this experience mean a lot, and I don't feel the bitter anymore、mm. because I know I suffering this is for people. Make them better, so I would think it's okay. Not everyone can suffering this bitterness. I can, so I do it. Yeah, so I think that is the way I cure myself. I can help myself, not living in regret. Yeah, regret yeah. is a killer. Yeah, because it's the it's the wound, often from the past. That because you're in the present, you can't find the wound. You only are picking at the pain, and you can't put a bandaid on it. It's the it's the it's the hurt that can never be fixed. You cannot change the history. You cannot、right. fix, it, but you can think in the other way. So as long as I change my mind, I think those suffering is mean meaningful. The suffering is not bitter anymore. Impressive. It's present. And that would be a gift. So I know now I face the challenge. I will know that will make me more mature. And those suffering, even in the future, is for others, and that's fine with me. Yeah, I would a, take it. That's impressive. So I mean, I, I again, I see this common thread. So the social work, even the work you did before, the baseball, the you know. Pre- creating a more just and equitable and fair world, and so how do you feel if you don't mind me asking about, you know, you you live in Taiwan, you're Taiwanese, and you know I have a great love for Taiwan as well. Thank and you. I'm going to be going to Taiwan、Thank、in、you. two weeks. So what do you what are your thoughts? I mean, to the Taiwanese people, or not that you're a spokesperson <laughs> for the Taiwan, but just like from your own perspective. You know, against the backdrop of you know 
what Taiwan's forced to have to, you know, Taiwan's actually really great. Yeah. Right now, it's, it's an amazing place. In fact, I, 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 I want to live there I love more. it. Yeah, yeah I, I love, I love it. so much about Taiwan. Yeah. I mean, but um, it's kind of a crappy situation, just to put it directly, you know, internationally, yeah. you know, what Taiwan, yeah. every time I do lobbying work, and I hear, you know, the the member of Congress or the senator or their aide saying, oh, the one China policy. And I'm like, yeah. you know, what the, <laughs> you know, are you guys talking about? <laughs> Taiwan is Taiwan. It is not China. Why are we doing this? So, yeah, you know, it's, what it's, are your thoughts on that? Well, it's really a spooky. We have the very spooky and mean never. I always tell my friend that if Taiwan is a boat, I, I want to ship in next to the United States, you know, <laughs> boom, just move on. But unfortunately, we cannot do that. For me, I think Taiwan is independent. And we, I want, hopefully, one day in my life, I can see Taiwan legally independent and uh, accepted by the global society. And uh, some, I think the Taiwanese now, we are just like a lot of us. We just like uh, women who suffering the domestic violence, you know. Just like, well, we don't we don't annoy them. They will not beat us, you know. Just follow them. Just obey them. They will not hit us. What a comparison. Well, we just you know, don't ask too much. We, now we have food, we have good living, we can watch television, we have all that. It's good enough. Why you want to go out? It's good enough. We can survive. That's good enough. Think about earlier. Some people, some other countries, they don't have food anymore. Right? You know, we can go drive. We can go eat outside. You know, it's good enough. Don't, don't annoy people. Let go As long as they don't drink, they don't beat us. As long as we obey them. They don't beat us, okay? Be, be a good, good, good woman. Be a good girl, right? Like that. So I was wondering, well, sometimes when it's, you know, when we face China, just like uh, the women who are suffering the domestic violence, they twist their mind. Why? No matter what you've done, they cannot beat you. They cannot. Right? So I think to pursue independence, the the very important thing is the first of all, you have to be believe that you can do it. You have to believe it, mm. no matter what challenge you're gonna face. Of course, everything costs something, but not everyone will would willing to pay the cost. But in your mind, don't get, don't lose your mind. You have to believe in it, and as long as the direct direction is correct, don't rush. We can step by step go over the way, but don't miss, don't miss the direction. Yeah, that's what I think. So that's awesome. So we try. We just try every day and try hard. Maybe something happen. Maybe. Even longer, but we have only limited limited life. Don't regret. Yeah. When and you, if we don't try, then that becomes a regret in and of itself. Yes. Yeah. So time, you know, as me for me looking at it, the rights of self determination is a human right. How is it that China has it, but Taiwan doesn't have the right to have it? But the beauty is. Is that China doesn't get doesn't have the right to make that decision for Taiwan, no matter what they say. It only belongs to Taiwanese. Yeah, yeah. We always ask, tell our children to be independent. Don't rely on other people. Why <laughs> we don't do begin but from ourselves? We only want to rely on China, rely on America, rely on Japan. No, Taiwan is Taiwan. Stand out by yourself. No matter people support you or against you, just make your own decision. Make the choice. Be responsible to, to that. That is our life. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, with that, 
I'm going to say thank you so much for this amazing <laughs> interview. Thank you. Actually, we were intending to do this for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And as I see it, we are almost an hour. <laughs> but I think it's been a productive interview. I can tell you I've never had one like this. We covered an amazing amount of territory from this world and the world <laughs> beyond, the world of baseball, yeah. social yeah. work politics, the future of Taiwan. This is good, heady stuff. I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. So thank you. Well, it's just, you know, limited life. Try to experience with your full heart. Yes. Yeah. And no regret. Uh, all right. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.